Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birdtail. Welcome back to the channel. So we are jumping into the penultimate episode 11 for Beastars season one. Uh, I literally just finished watching episode 10, just switched out of my red shirt into this one. So it doesn't look like I'm like, like I want it to just look somewhat consistently different. So it's not, there's no confusion for anyone. But last episode was absolutely crazy. I do want to apologize because I pride myself off of like being thorough and having notes and you know re-watching the episode and you know having like in-depth discussion and analysis of an episode i feel like i've been doing that relatively well with each episode but last episode was just an absolute like train fest of like just non-stop after they managed to get after like legacy met up with the panda guy and then they went and fought that first line it was kind of just like all bets are off and i feel like i don't know i might actually binge the last three episodes at this point but regardless of that um the, the last episode was great um, I feel like it was just kind of like non-stop like from the start just because the previous episode did a really good job at setting up the fact that Haru's kidnapped she's kidnapped by these lions Rui is has his hands tied isn't able to do anything Legacy doesn't really have a plan but he's motivated enough to protect her because he loves her and we'll see what happens with that love the fact that they brought the panda dude back I love that I like pretty much like like I, I put two and two together I was like oh my gosh they're in the freaking black market that's where the panda guy was last time. That man is an absolute fucking unit. And if anyone's going to be able to try to help, it's going to be that guy. Because he has like a very, he's like, he's just filled with wisdom. He's great. He's built different. Like he's actually able to kind of like take down anybody as a panda with the fucking crossbow. That shit looks so free. That shit was just so hype to have him there and then give Legacy some advice, move on. And then he still tailed him to help him out against the lions. I was not expecting things to pop off as seriously as they did. Like, that guy shot himself in the fucking- I thought Legacy, like, straight up, like, capped that guy, that first lion. I was like, oh my fucking god, like, damn, Legacy, you're still a high school kid. I don't think you can have, like, a fucking rap sheet on your freaking- on your- on your permanent record. Uh, even if they are thugs or goons or whatever over, you know, granted, you know, it's life or death in this world. So at the end of the day, they're still animals. But yeah, like, the last episode was so freaking good. Running up and fighting off all those lions, like, getting some actual action sequences- uh, which was really cool. The, the music I do want to compliment as well. I didn't really talk about it all that much other than like mentioning it offhandedly. But uh, the music the last episode, like the OST tracks were really well used. The music that played at the end when Legacy and Haru saw each other for the first time after, you know, after that whole ordeal uh, was very heartfelt and um, really kind of sold that moment of like these two destined to be together starstruck you know herbivore and carnivore forbidden love brought together so um i just thought the last episode was really great and like like a lot of high octane uh, you know high octane energy and really kept things going in a, in a nice and fashionable way for this episode which is the penultimate so i don't really know what's gonna happen now is there gonna be a face-off with shishigumi is he gonna grab haru and just fucking jump out the window and run back to cherryton high school and hide in their dormitories you know what I mean? Like, the lions know where she is now. Like, they can just easily retrace their steps and find her again when she's, you know, not protected by anyone or when she's alone. So I really don't know how things are going to fare off now because you fucked with the Shishigumi gang and everybody in the general public is, like, scared of them. And it kind of seems like... You know, you make an enemy out of these guys, you're kind of, a, you got a target on your back. And with Legacy being a wolf, I guess maybe that helps him out a little bit, because he's not like a, a, a he's not like a, a, a hapless predator, uh, or I'm sorry, a hapless like herbivore or anything like that, but I am still worried about like where this, what this means for, for Legacy, and especially Haru, uh, moving forward. There was a little bit of a scene with, uh, with Juno and, uh, and Rui. Rui's basically like, he's not coming back. If he's going after the Shishigumi gang, he's pretty much dead along with Haru. So I can't wait to see the look on this man's face when Haru not only comes, but when Legacy not only comes back, but he's coming back with the girl that he said that he was going to make his. Um, I don't really know what's up with Juno, at least for right now, because she's kind of like, she's got her own ambition. She's got her own agenda. Uh, I feel like she might hold out that Legacy will be okay and he'll come back, but I feel like he she couldn't care less for, for Haru, given the fact that she knows how Legacy feels about her. And if Haru comes back alive, like I mentioned a couple episodes ago, it's still going to spell trouble for, for Haru, for her own classmate, because Juno is going to see her as competition. And, um... I, I, again, like I mentioned at the very end of the last episode, because that's pretty much what I tagged on was like the last bit of like the last five minutes of the episode, was, um... Was Haru's kind of internal monologue of her life and regrets and why she has kind of lived the life that she has lived and has built the reputation that she's built around you know getting around 
with uh, with other students and um, kind of like her justification or rationalization of it because she always felt like she was weak and she was helpless and people always looked at her look looked upon her with pity and that pity manifested into affection because of that and and wanting to kind of secure the fact that like you can protect her and you can always care for her and you'll always be there because you see her as inferior and legacy was kind of like the one that broke the mold and kind of like made her see through that that like he's the only one that saw her for her even the person that she loves even the person that she wants to confess her love to being Rui didn't see her that way and even now he kind of sees her as a a temporary thing because he's got a future and he's got a, you know a fiance picked out for him and he's got big plans for the future and he kind of saw her as like a temporary thing nothing permanent nothing serious whereas she has always feared death because she's young and she's always grown up knowing that she could die very easily at any moment and she wants to you know make the most of it so i i just love how the last five minutes of the last episode kind of like contextualized haru's character in general you know i love that she's still feisty i love that she was still willing to put up a fight um, and I really love that, like, her expression of, like, seeing Legacy, and the, the best part of the episode, like, towards the end was that he threw his shirt to her, and he was like, I know I smell, but, you know, put it on anyway, despite the fact that it's like a, like, she was just about to die, you're going up against the head honcho, you could potentially die, he was still considerate, so that's kind of like, that's like Legacy in a nutshell, but anyways, um, I really liked the last episode. I really hope you guys are continuing to enjoy these reactions. Like I said, this is the penultimate episode, uh, the penultimate level. Um, did I say level and then episode? I meant this is the penultimate episode, uh, for, for the season and next episode is the finale. So don't really know how this episode is going to fare. Obviously they need to get out of there. Hopefully, uh, Goheen is okay on the lower levels. Uh, don't know if Shishigumi is going to deal with them now or later or, you know, whatever the case might be, but... Uh, the episode left us off in the middle of some, like, really tense, uh, tense like, emotions between Legacy and Haru, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, but thank you guys all so much for the support. As always, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, and without further ado, let us begin. Alright guys, so we're gonna be jumping into Beastars, the penultimate episode 11 of season 1 to the Neon District. And we're gonna be starting this in 3, 2, 1, now. Oh shit, oh, back at the school! I was like, whoa, are we back in the first episode? We're in a fix. Oh, damn. He left his belongings and everything. Oh, damn, is, is everyone gonna go looking for Legacy? Yesterday? Oh, you're missing too? Wait, what? What is happening to the Neon District? All right. What's, uh, did they get out of the lion's den? What's, oh no, Kabu is dead. Oh my gosh, I hope that's not like, I hope that's not like, foreshadowing for things to come. Yeah, bad sign. An animal like me. Hey, 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 watch. Watch how you close those claws, my guy. <laughs> Fragile creatures. Hold on, let me, let me go back to what he said there. I actually liked what he said there. Can never close the distance on small, fragile creatures. Ah, I don't know. I don't know about that. That might, that might be turning around for you now. Oh. Meanwhile, yeah. Talk about closing that distance. Holy shit, yo! You better bite his ass. Oh. Oh. Holy fuck. Yo, he just took a bite out of Legacy. Jeez. Bite him in the neck. Oh my god, where's the panda man? Where's Goheen? Come on, Legacy, you got this. Dude, I'd be fucking lit. I'd be like, bro, let go of my fuck. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, dude, he's fucking battered. Yeah, I agree. This is the end for you. <laughs> Call the police, but not for me. <laughs> Jack, the purpose of being born a wolf is to protect others. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna kill him. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking kill him. He's gonna fucking bite his ass in the neck. Oh! Yo, let's go! Here we go. Oh! 
Holy shit! <laughs> I'm doing everything for you, dude! Oh! <laughs> dude! Gee, yo, don't chill! Okay, okay. Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, we asked for the wolf. We we got the wolf. <laughs> Dude, did he just kill the gang leader? Yeah, how do you how do you uh after seeing something like that? Ah. Uh, it's a delicate balance you got to play. Gentle and ferocious, timid and fury. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's spent. Yo, where's freaking Goheen? The things we do for love, am I right? Oh, no, 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 no. Goheen, like, cleaned up, bro. Old panda. Oh, they roped up everybody else. Okay. Well, your leader's dead, so you guys might want to find a new... Find a new... Is he dead? Whoa! Oh, he's still alive? No! No, 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 wait. Yo, please let the panda still be here. Oh, <gasps> come up. There you fucking go. Who got him? That was a gun gun. Oh. Oh! What? Oh! When the fuck did he show up? I'm surprised they didn't turn around when they heard the gunshot. Unless it was... Unless it was masked by the by the thunder. Rui, what the fuck? <gasps> oh. Ooh. What the fuck happened to this show? What happened to the fucking light-hearted? Uh. Yeah, Rui's gone off the deep end bro he's like yeah i'm fully embracing number four. Oh, oh, okay okay <laughs> okay rui's rui kind of rui's kind of bad dude i i fucks with rui dude holy shit what the fuck this man just went off the deep end I literally thought Rui was just going to be a fucking boy scout the entire time. I literally thought this man was just going to be like, play ball, play nicely, do what you got to do to get that bag, to get you what you want in the future. And he's like, he's kind of like becoming like a vigilante almost. He just saved these two. I'll be in. Where did where, where you get the gun from? Is that thing licensed? Are you able to, are you licensed to carry? I was not expecting it to be him because I was like, wait, that was an actual gun. That wasn't a crossbow. It wasn't like the, the the bamboo bolt. What the fuck, dude? What the hell, dude? Rui's about to be like an underground king. Now I really need to watch out for leg like Legacy made it off scot free. Freaking <laughs> Rui was strapped. <laughs> Holy shit! I wonder what he's gonna do with these two now. What he's how is he gonna react? I love you. I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, he kind of earns it. Oh, that looks so good. Similar? Mm-hmm. The last... Oh! Uh-oh. How y'all getting home? <laughs> Lodging? Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Oh, I see where this is going. The episode is called Neon District. And if I if I'm thinking what I'm thinking that is, uh yeah. Who's vi Who the heck is it? What the heck? <laughs> That's a new character. It's like a bamboo, uh, a bamboo baboon. Oh, they think that they're messing around, I think. Maybe? Oh no! Okay. Are they thinking that? 
They think they're messing around. Bro, she just got kidnapped. <laughs> you hear the music shift? Yeah, we all know what's up. Got fucking alley cats in here and shit. Aw, oh, come on. Because <laughs> that means we're sleeping together. Yeah, that's another thing too. I'm surprised she's not like in shock. He's gonna make up something. Male mode. Uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, I'm not. I'm about to act up if you if you keep this up. Mm. Oh shit. <laughs> She's trying to make something happen. Yeah. Things are things are escalating. I see what they're doing here. <laughs> oh, legacy. Oh, fuck, bro. This is it really about to go down? Oh, that's... Yeah. So you can see yourself. And she's, like, naked under, under his shirt, too. So it's kind of like... <laughs> Yo, I'm nervous. <laughs> Come on, Legacy. <laughs> Make the move. Be a fucking man. Let's go. Uh, uh, don't interrupt him again. Bro, she's capping right now. I mean, he is covered in blood. Like, you can't, you gotta fucking ruin the, ruin a good moment. You just gotta ruin the sheets. <laughs> Yeah, and she, uh, she gotcha. Okay. Yeah, they're really set in the mood for this scene. Oh, is he gonna tell her? Oh, dude, he's set in the fucking mood. Oh! That's what happened. That's what it was. While recreating it. <laughs> Oh, that's such a nice scene! The mirror shot side by side. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, come on, bro. It's an anime. Of course she already knew. <laughs> oh, no. he's He's been fighting for you this whole time. He's been fighting for you. Mm. All right, my guy. Don't fucking eat her, please. Or this season, I don't know how season two is going to play out. God, the fucking suspense is killing me. Jesus. Come on, bro. You got this. <laughs> this man's like freaking examining her. <sighs> Damn, we're really doing this? We're really doing this. Oh. <laughs> I love how the money, the rest of his money fell out of his shoe. Oh, that's so good. Wait, what? Uh, hello? Oh, is it her reflexes kicking in? He's trying- she's trying to get him to not bite- oh, wow. Oh my god. Damn, way to ruin a mood, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh my fucking god, that was the episode! Holy shit! Oh my god. Bro, that last scene... That last scene was chef's kiss, bro. That last scene, that's like probably like one of the most like intimate scenes I've ever seen in like a show before. Holy shit, dude. My boy Legacy moving on up in the world, but goddamn. All right, so your boy took a little bit of a time skip between that reaction and this discussion here, but I am no less hyped. I'm no less excited to talk about this penultimate chapter 11 or episode 11 rather of Star season one. We have one episode left. It's been forever since I've watched anime. This has been a really awesome series to cover. 
and talk about and to share my interest and excitement of the characters, the plot, all of the different implications of the show so far going into season two, now that I know that there is a season two. Um, and we, but we still have one more episode because it seems like season one is going to be kind of like left up in the air. I don't really know what the focus or the plot of season two is going to be necessarily, but we still have one more episode to focus on that. I think this episode overall was really awesome. Um, there was action. There was resolution. Haru was safe. We got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, spicy tension towards the end with Legacy and Haru again, um, and I think that's for a bunch of different reasons: a bunch of uh, emotions clashing, a bunch of hormones clashing, and everything else like that. Um, and that it kind of it's kind of like a more refined version of like what Episode Two slash Three had with her first approaching Legacy with those intentions, but now the the intent is very different, right? He saved her. He basically shared his affection for her, and I feel like she's feeling differently about Legacy compared to Rui, considering how he's the one that went there to save her himself, and I don't really know how she's going to feel necessarily about Rui not showing up, you know, and just kind of leaving things in the hands of, of Legacy and Goheen. Um, but then again, he did kind of act behind the scenes, but at that point, that's kind of the position that he's in, because he's all these corrupt, you know, adults, and, you know, like the mayor and stuff like that, and this freaking Yakuza lion gang or Causing problems and he has to kind of fall in line and, and and keep things in order but Rui really surprised me at the end there I was not expecting him of all characters to kind of go down that vigilante dark route um, and it seems like he's gonna embrace that moving forward he's not just gonna be this fucking squeaky clean boy scout that I thought he was going to just end up shaping up to be for the sake of his uh, uh, potential future in politics and stuff like that but overall, the episode was very well done. I think it was very well paced. I think there was just about everything there to kind of keep me engaged the entire way through. The episode picks up with a bit of a uh, an interesting kind of like flashback to flash forward of Legacy finding his purpose in life, finding the thing that he felt like he was born to pursue being a carnivore, and that is to protect other people. It's to protect the one that he loves. Uh, I really liked how it was symbolized through the little beetle that we got to see throughout the season that he used to take care of, you know, this giant ferocious wolf is like a gentle giant taking care of this little tiny bug that brings him this, you know, this level of joy and, and, and solace in his life and peace and comfort. Um, and how that has always been his purpose. And it's now extended to someone that he actually has romantic feelings for, passionate feelings for uh, with Haru. So I, I just really like how the start of the episode like emphasizes that and it just reinforces what he's fighting for in that moment when it shifts back over to him fighting the line in the dark and i like i didn't realize shit was gonna get like this crazy in the last couple of episodes right the previous episode you got motherfuckers getting shot in the neck in the freaking face and shit with freaking bamboo crossbow bolts you got other characters getting shot with guns and shit and, like blood flying everywhere legacy's going at this man's neck that guy's going after legacy's arm like ripping tearing skin off and whatnot and I'm just like, bro, like, I always, I almost kind of forget that these are animals, like, out to kind of, like, they're, they're forced to live harmoniously with each other. But at the end of the day, like, Haru was about to be eaten by this lion not even, like, five minutes before the episode kicked off. So, I just really like how it contextualizes a lot of uh, Legacy's evolution throughout the show, right? He kind of acted the way that he did, a very docile... Uh, reserved kind of character despite being a herbivore because he didn't really have a purpose. He didn't have a reason to bear his fangs, to bear his claws, to get ferocious, to have that killing instinct because that's not in his nature necessarily. I don't know if it's genetics. I don't know if it's just tra trauma or like childhood, you know, childhood differences or things that happened in his life that makes him not want to bring that out of him. Like another character like Bill who kind of embraces being a, a tiger and embraces the black market eatery and stuff like that. So um, I just really, really like how they contextualized what he was fighting for in that moment. He was fighting for her love, her affection, her protection, for him to be the thing that defends her from all of these crazy things out there in the world. So the fighting was awesome. The fighting was great. Love that legacy actually popped off. Uh, that was kind of like a very exciting factor that kind of continued from the last episode, which was almost all action. So that's why I felt like there wasn't much to talk about uh, in the last batch there. Simultaneously, of course, uh, crazy shit's happening at the school. The festival seems to be set up for the following day. So I think the finale is going to be the Meteor Festival, fall, uh, aftermath of the Meteor Festival. Um, you know, every everyone is already prepared and celebrated all of that. I don't know if there's going to be any tension between characters because 
what's her name? Uh, Juno now knows that Legacy has feelings for Haru. And I feel like there's going to be all of this gossip going around because word around this campus right now is that Legacy and Haru are missing. And so these two characters are like messing around with each other and they're spending overnight outside of the school. And, you know, there's other students like behind, around the corner, like listening in. And I feel like word's going to get around to like, mainly to Rui and Juno because you know they're it's kind of like this love square at this point Juno has things for Legacy Legacy has things for Haru Haru had feelings for Rui and Rui kind of like accepted messing around with with Haru and now he knows that Legacy also has feelings for her and it's like a Mr. Steal Your Girl kind of thing but his feelings are actually genuine whereas Rui's is kind of like comes from a place of comfort even though he's got like B stars to think about and his future fiance to think about and his family to think about so so I feel like that's just going to lead to a lot of tension between probably with Haru more than anything, because again, Juno is still a predator. Juno is still a, a, a very significant threat. And she's another female, you know, a female wolf that's kind of vying for Legacy's love and affection, considering that they're both wolves and they're kind of like in their same species zone. So um, that's kind of what's going on at the school right now. I feel like that's going to kind of build tension for once Haru's back at school. You know, it's bad enough that she already went through almost getting killed almost having her life taken before her very eyes before legacy showed up and now she's got to worry about you know school drama that's like the last thing i would give a shit i'd be like you know what i don't give a fuck okay i almost died yesterday you want to be mad that her legacy has feelings for me too fucking bad and i feel like she's sassy enough to to do something like that but i also think juno is crazy enough to to to, to act up so um Really like how that kind of set up for potential stuff that we might get in the next episode. Maybe that'll even carry over to season two. I don't know if there's going to be a time skip or anything like that. Uh, and then the final wrap up por portion of the episode. Well, you know, before we get too far into it, uh, Rui really surprised me. So obviously the aftermath of everything, Legacy deliberately didn't kill the Shishigumi gang leader. Obviously, he doesn't want to have that kind of blood on his hands. You know, he already has it in his mouth. So, obviously, he doesn't want to actually kill someone. He's still a fucking high school kid, after all. Uh, but that didn't stop Ru That did not stop Rui whatsoever. Don't know where he got that piece from. Probably picked it up off the ground. I hope so. But now he's, you know, he's strapped at this point, And he just freaking capped that dude. Um, just out of nowhere, he's like, yo, you guys really thought you had me. You guys really thought I wasn't about to act up. And he just fucking shot that guy in the mouth. He probably bodied those other two henchmen that came through, even though everybody else in that place was killed um or taken care of or subdued between legacy and goheen and uh yeah he's kind of gone down it seems like he's going to be embracing this kind of i hope he also doesn't fall down like the corrupt rabbit hole um i hope it's more so of like uh by any means necessary he's gonna do whatever it takes to kind of get what he wants but i hope it doesn't lead to him being just as corrupt as the people around him you know, like he was blackmailed by the mayor to fall in line with giving up on Haru. But, you know, the way that he was laughing, the way that he just freaking killed someone in cold blood, you know, granted it was a freaking disgusting gang leader. He deserved it. I hope that doesn't spell too much for him in terms of like being corrupt himself. You know, he said like he's done with dealing with shitty adults and, um, you know, he's basically going to embrace things here on out. So maybe that just means that he'll... He has a no problem getting his hands dirty if it means getting the things that he wants. But hopefully he doesn't let that aspect of him consume him too much. Um, I don't know if that's going to extend beyond the school or if that's within the, the confines of the school or whatever. Obviously he did it too to protect, especially since Legacy ended up saving Haru. It's just no one's going to know that it was him. So um, that was the second part of the episode. The third part, it was ultimately just like a big tease scene for, for Legacy more than anything. You know, he's had affections. He's had feelings for Haru this entire time you know since he laid eyes on her essentially and you know episode two you know the end of episode two and the start of episode three was the whole scene of her like trying to make a move on him because he, she, you know she thought he was like every other guy she was about to freaking go down on him right then and there and then you know it kind of like got out of hand where she kind of like overstepped her boundaries and now things are cut like contextually things are different now now He's her savior. Now he's vying for her affection. You know, they have time to themselves. They have, they're they in that specific moment. They're both high school kids. They both got hormones. They both, you know, legacy, like you said, he's still in male mode. He's in like alpha mode right now where he's just like, yo, I got all this blood and testosterone and these urges and these hormones and I just ate. So I'm like ready to go. And she's just like, she's got nothing but a t his t-shirt on. So it's kind of like, what do you expect's going to happen in a fucking love hotel of all places? I think it was very well done. 
more than anything. I wasn't expecting the 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 knee jerk reaction of uh, of Haru's instincts to to kind of blue ball him in that way. But uh, no, I thought it was really well done. It was more. Um, I think the tension was like the better thing. Like it was like a slow burn tension. Like oh yeah, he's he's finally gonna get his. He's finally gonna get the girl. And then it's like not quite. But the moments that we did get were very like high tense moments for the most part. But um. For lack of a better term, obviously, we're all thinking the same thing, you know. Is Legacy gonna smash? Is Legacy gonna get the girl? Is Legacy gonna have sex that night? And it's like, oh, well, clearly that didn't work out. I don't know if that's how the episode's gonna end off. I don't know if it's gonna pick up in that moment afterwards, because that's gonna be really awkward of, like... She's like, I want to do it. My mind's telling me yes, but my body's telling me no. So I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't know if Legacy's going to, at the very least, kiss the damn girl, let alone feel her up and, you know, make a move on her that way. But, um... I think at the end of the day, Legacy's come a very long way. He was still very much, like, out of his element, his heart pounding a mile a minute, like, not knowing what to do, thinking that he's just gonna freaking give in to his instincts and whatnot. But, um, but no, the episode was very, very well done overall. I, I think it was very well executed. Um, from the action, to the setup, to the finale, to, you know, the sexual tension, and the passion, and the, and the romance, and everything else in, in, in between. Um, I'm very interested to see how season two is going to play out. I don't know if there's going to be anything at the end of se uh, at the end of the finale that's going to set up for what season two will entail. Um, but right now, the only thing I can think of is that, you know, they spend the night together. They go back to school the next day. There's all this drama talking, you know, with them two spending the night, not being at school together. They have a thing for each other. You know, there's probably going to be rumors between him and her. And that'll reach Rui and that'll reach Juno. And then there'll be some conflict there. And then I don't really know how else they're going to set up for this unless they decide to kind of look into some of the murders that have been going on. You know, if we do find out that, you know, someone like Haru could be kidnapped in broad daylight and taken to some lion's den to be eaten, who's to say that some somebody else didn't do that to kind of send a message when they killed Tem in the first episode? And maybe that's what they'll focus on. Uh, you know, that initial murder that kind of set all of these chain of events to happen. But overall, really enjoyed this episode. I really hope you guys did as well. Like I said, it had a little bit of everything. It had action. It had tension. It had setup. There was a lot of uh, spicy moments there. So I think there was li uh, literally something for everyone in this episode. I think the penultimate episodes of most shows um, are probably my favorite episodes compared to the finale. Even though this finale is just like a setup for the second season, I'm assuming. But uh, yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. I hope you guys have also been enjoying these videos as they come out. Continue to leave your feedback and your support. Show it in the comments. Uh, I also appreciate the support of these over on Patreon as well. Uh, we have one episode left. Very excited to see how it fares, how it kind of wraps up everything moving forward. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got. Thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments down below and i will see you guys all in the next video take care